So there's not been a lot of changes that happened in this latest alpha build, but we still want to continue the discussion of tanks. And we want to continue some discussions that happened last week too, because there's some things that uh, are important and that should be corrected. But uh, the main change this week, uh, the only real change to any tank class this week is a big change to the ability Paladins have Ashen Halo. Okay, we talked a lot about that last week. If you haven't seen uh, video one and two of this series, you're really going to want to catch up on that. But um, this one is going to be talking about, uh, you know, our assumption on last week. And now they made a huge change to the spell. I mean, it's basically a different spell. It's, not, it's effectively not the same spell. So I'm going to read to you what it did last week. And then we can talk about uh, how you guys feel about this. So last week, uh, the, the previous build, more so, like regardless of when it happened, a halo the target area, four minutes CD, everything else is the same, like 1.5 second cast, still a cast time, which as I said in the last video, terrible idea. I don't don't know why it's a cast time. Four minute CD, still prohibitive as hell. But here's what it did last time. Uh, halo the target area, dealing 100% of spell damage times 12 shatter damage, split among enemies, and restoring 110% of spell power times 12, split among allies as healing. Okay, so uh, that was that was only for 12 seconds total. It did that. Then the land remains filled with anima, causing a fight like much, much less. I don't know the math on Wowhead. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not that kind of guy. But anyway, of uh, causing much, much less shadow damage to all enemies over one minute. And you gain the benefit of consecration while in the area. So last week, uh, my major critiques of the spell were, uh, first of all, it's a four minute CD. It, it, it's hard to use, like very hard to use at a four minute CD, even harder to use at a 1.5 second cast, 1.4 in the game because of haste. Uh, and it also ticks faster because of haste. You can see by the tooltip every 1.8 seconds instead of every two seconds, it says on the tooltip. So uh, th those are the numbers that are in live right now. Uh, and the big, the big change here is it's not splitting anymore. Like that, that is a big change. So that's, I mean, it's, a buff in almost every way unless you're using it on a boss right um but yeah it used to do a lot more damage if you're just using it on a single target but it would only do that for 12 seconds so what do you guys think about that it's like this is gonna be this is better right i, I don't know if anybody thinks this isn't better so here's what it, i'll read it out loud halo the target area for 30 seconds every 1.8 seconds an enemy in the area suffers 1400 shadow damage and a he an ally is healed for 1476 within the halo you may use hammer of wrath on any target so it makes me wonder and an ally in the area is healed i wonder if it only wait does it only heal one person the, the wording on that sounds weird and there's no i don't have any way to test that right now so um, the wording on that makes me think that it only heals one person, but I don't know. What do you guys think about that? Uh, for me as a prop pally, I think this is not the complete opposite of what, what prop pally needed. Uh, but I've been talking about how good prop pally it has been in the alpha, and I think they're going to remain good. Uh, but this is definitely just like a no way, no how ability. I would never even consider taking this, especially considering like the Bastion ability is just so much more usable. And it's so much higher value too. Um, so, oh yeah, there's a player right there. Maybe we could see. Uh, but anyway, the, the the use of Hammer of the Wrath is the cool part. Oh, he's running away. The use of uh, Hammer of the Wrath is the cool part because it allows you to basically just Hammer of the Wrath on CD for 30 seconds. Now, of course, this is still a seven and a half second cooldown. So it looks better. You might think it's better than it is. Uh, when I saw that, I was like, oh my God, Hammer of the Wrath on any target as long as you're standing within it. Now, I have had some weird, but I don't know if it's a bug or if I'm missing something about it. I've had some weird problems where Hammer of the Wrath does not function. Like, I don't get the buff. I don't get the ability to use it. So I'm thinking that that might be because there's some bug with when you place it on some, like, uneven terrain or something like that. Because it happened to me quite a few times. I was actually testing it right here. And uh, I, t I pulled these mobs over here. And maybe it's because this mob is dead, though. <laughs> this mob is dead, but he's also alive. If you pull this thing, uh, it is still actually alive. So I don't know. Um, but yeah. I, I don't know, some uneven terrain maybe is causing that problem. I don't think that's an intentional change, but um, yeah, just, just to show it off, uh, it works like you'd expect, uh, Hammer of the Wrath, you know what I mean? You're going to use that because 
it's it's not only the most probably the most damaging spell you have, right? I don't, yeah, I have to imagine it is. Actually, no, judgment still does more damage, but um, either way, it generates a holy power as well. So, like, why would you not use that? You know what I mean? But so so the big change here is it lasts a minute. Uh, it allows you to execute a target, which generates a holy power and does a good amount of damage, of course. But um, maybe the more important thing is now that it. It's it's thirty. I'm sorry. Did I say last a minute? It's thirty second duration, right? So, um, it's very interesting. I don't I don't know what to think about it. I really don't. But I think it's better than it was for sure. The problem that I hated, the thing that I hated about it before, was like how likely is this spell to have value for a full minute? The answer was nothing. No, like a hundred. You know what I mean? Other than like a raid boss with like a million ads. It's just not going to ever be good. Like, it's just a terrible spell compared to the other one. So, I, I still think it is. But it's just better than it was. And presumably, uh, you know, I don't know, every 1.8 seconds. Is that actually slower or faster? Yeah, I don't know. It said over 12 seconds in the past. Now it just says every 2 seconds. So I don't know. That's interesting. So I'm not sure what to think about that. But that, that's that's pretty much the only tank change. I just wanted to, to document that because you know point the point of this series is to follow every uh, you know every step of the way. So does that change your opinion on Paladin? Um, how do you feel about the spell? Do you think it was better or worse than before? Do you think it's it's good now? Do you, are you happy with the change? For me, I would still. There's no way that that that's just too long of a CD. I mean, that's a ridiculous CD. A four minute CD. This is supposed to be like a spec-defining spell, right? I'm not a big fan of these long CDs. I think everyone should be shorter. Uh, but so some other things I do want to also bring up, um, just real quick. Blood Decay, I made a small mistake last time. Well, it wasn't small. It was a relatively big mistake last time we made the video. In, in part two, I said something that was not true. And it took me. It took a while for somebody to correct me, but I'm glad they did. I was talking about how overpowered Voracious sounded, right? So if you remember, I think the direct conversation was like, Death Pact is terrible. Uh, it only heals you for 50% of your maximum health. And it's a two-minute CD. Whereas with Voracious, I'll be healing for 50% of the damage I've taken. You know, blah, blah, blah. I was saying this number, right? And what I what I thought at the time and why I was wrong was it says Death Strike's healing is increased by 20% and grants you 15% leech. I, this is why I suck at math, but I had this in my head that it just it, it just added another 20% to the spell. Like, you know, when you read the Death Strike tooltip, like, let, let's read the tooltip. See what it says? Focuses dark power into a strike that deals one blah, 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 and heals you for 30% of all damage taken in the last five seconds. So I'm like, oh, it's going to be... 50% or whatever, but 45%. That's what I thought because it just says 20%. But no, it's 20% of 25%, which is just 5%. So if you switch to tap, you could actually see this in the tooltip, which I didn't even think about. But now, now you'll see the tooltip says 25% of all damage taken in the last 5%. And I change it back. Now it says 30%. So this isn't that overpowered. It's not as overpowered as I thought it was. No, not even close. But it's definitely still way more power. I mean, it has to be way more powerful. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I just don't see how this is still... This is not balanced. Death Pack is still over underpowered, for sure. Like, no matter what. It should be a one-minute CD if it's going to stay at 50%. Because there's, like, a detriment to using it. You know what I mean? Uh, but I don't know. I, I think Voracious is still ridiculous. And um, the 15% leech thing. I mean, that's... Everybody, like... Last expansion, I said the same thing about Voracious. I said it was going to be a go-to talent. And I was wrong, obviously. And mostly because Bloodworms was just overpowered. The big thing about Bloodworms is it does offense, too. Uh, and that's something to still think about, right? But, yeah, I, if you only need defense, then obviously Bloodworms is not going to compete with Voracious. But if you need both, which is pretty common, Bloodworms is still probably a great talent. I mean, it is very good in live, in BFA, and I don't think anything's changed here. So, um yeah, we'll see how that plays out. But either way, I really like this talent. And I really liked it in the past, too. And the reason that people discredited my like for it was because they claimed it was Leech when you needed it the least. And I like to me, I'm like, I don't know. Do you guys play Blood Decay? <laughs> it's like, I, I always need Leech. I'll, I'll always take Leech. The problem was it was lower uptime. I think it was only six seconds in the past. And it was only like, it was a less, less percent Leech. 
Now at 15% for eight seconds, it's going to be up much, much higher. And I think we, we do have logs from the DK testing. You can go check that out. Uh, but uh, speaking of logs, there's some other thing I want to talk about, okay? Uh, the other thing I, I uh, tested this week, the only other real alpha gameplay I did this week was to look at Prot Warrior in Torghast, okay? And if you watch that stream, uh, it wasn't a good one, unfortunately. Not because, uh, you know, anything gameplay-wise, but it's because I was, like, having a terrible, terrible allergy attack, and I wasn't able to enjoy it. But I have these links. Uh, they're going to be in the description of these um, logs from this, okay? And I think the, the 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 thing that I took away from this is impending victory is really strong. Like, yeah, let's go on the warrior real quick because I don't know. I don't know what to think about this class, man. I really don't. I, I'm trying my best to be open-minded for it, but I just don't like it. It's just not me. It's just not for me. Um, and I just don't really know what they're going to do. And we talked a lot about this. And uh, I think Torgath really just hammered this home for me. Like, what is their niche? What are they good at? What are they the best at? They're not the best at anything. And that's how it was in Legion. Uh, in Legion, they had no niche. They were not the best at anything. You know what I mean? They were never like... In in, in five-man dungeons, talking about like mostly five-man dungeons here, in five-man dungeons, you need to have something that you are brought to the key for. You understand that? Because you can only take one tank. So Blood Decay's, you know, most common usability is like in in this in this order, in my opinion, Death Grip. You know what I mean? Because Death Grip is just like really good in a lot of ways. Uh, battle Res, right? In a lot of ways, mandatory, especially in Legion. Uh, and um, you know, then like just to self healing, right? Like okay, well now the healer uh, in many cases doesn't need to heal the tank at all, right? So like those are the three, th and then you might have like control undead and some other things. They got a list of they got a list of things, man. It's like a laundry list. You take it out, you got all kinds of things. Okay, so warrior. What's what's warrior brought two keys for right now? Commonly looked at as the most reliable physical defender in battle for Azeroth. Is that still true in Shadowlands? I don't I don't think so. I can't see how they're better than. I mean, Blood DK got insane buffs, right? They got like a thousand new spells, and Brewmaster got like the single strongest spell in the game. So <laughs> is Brought Warrior still the king? I don't think so. I don't really think they're the king on in live either. I think that's gra grossly overstated. But I still think that they are very good, of course. And I, I don't think that's true anymore, right? So what's next? Uh, offense, right? Offense is the number one reason you bring a warrior in Season 3, 4, even 2, obviously, you know, as well, uh, in ba Battle for Azeroth. But that's gone, right? Like, surely they're not going to be the best offensive tank anymore. We tried all kinds of talents. We tried all kinds of things, All ki you know, all kinds of mental preparation and they still do terrible single target damage their aoe is heavily confined to the bastion ability when we tested this uh, you can use the bastion ability in torghast you can't use it anywhere else but it, like 50 percent of their damage is the bastion ability when it's up you know what i mean so it's like are we going to keep with that are all the abilities going to do that what are the other abilities going to do because obviously the one from uh, venthyr does not do 50 percent of your damage right um, so I don't, I don't really know what to think about this class. And all I could think of is if they just had more consistent self-healing, I might actually enjoy them. So we're talking a lot about, um, you know, War Machine. It seemed like a really, really good talent. It's so, it's quite strong. And I guess it's buffed. I don't know. I'm not exactly sure. But I have to say, Impending Victory is just stronger right now. Now they buffed that. Um, it, it does require 10 Rage. I don't, I don't actually know. You know what? Let's look it up because I don't want to say... Um, I don't want to say it wrong, but they did, uh, they did change it for sure. Um, it, it used to be a lot worse on, uh, BFA. So let's take a look at exactly what it says in BFA and in BFA. Okay. And instantly attack the target. It does cost 10 rage. It's that hasn't changed. Uh, instantly attack the target causing blah, 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 attack power and healing you for 20% of your maximum health, killing an enemy that yields experience or honor resets the cooldown of impending victory. And... Uh, yeah, it's 20% of your maximum health without the talent. So this does buff the healing too. Now, 30% of your maximum health is a tank. This is pretty good, guys. This is a good, this is a good talent on a 30 second CD. So as far as I could state, I think this is mandatory talent. I don't see how I couldn't play without this. After playing with it in Torghast, it's probably the number one thing I learned, uh, from playing with Torghast. Uh, they just have no self-sustain. Indomitable is okay, but as you see... 
on this chart here. I mean, it didn't, like, you know what I mean? You'd think Indomitable would be your top healing because you're constantly using Rage, especially in Torghast, right? Like, I'm getting all these abilities that do crazy things. Uh, but, yeah, no, Impending Victory destroyed it. Like, it's not even close. And Indomitable reads, your maximum health is increased by 10%. So that, that's good for Impending Victory. That that buffs Impending Victory. But any, every 10 Rage you spend heals you for 1% of your maximum health. So you would assume... Well, you're not going to get to 30% every 30 seconds, that's for sure. But you assume a lot of impending victory is going to be overhealing if you use it on cooldown. Let's take a look uh, how much overhealing it did. Wait, none? I only used it five times as well. I don't get that. Um, yeah, here we go. This is when I had it properly. I think before that, I had uh, probably didn't have it for the whole run. I don't know why it doesn't show last whatever the other ability is called. But anyway... Um, yeah, this is this I had it for the whole run. So I used it 71% of the time, and it only overhealed 10%. So that's that's pretty good actually. Indomitable can still heal two of overheal two, of course. Uh, but as you see, the average hit was only 1k. Uh and it did hit like, yeah, <laughs> like five times more. So um yeah, I mean that's that's not bad. The difference there is not 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 that significant, but it is significant, right? So, yeah, I don't know. I think Impending Victory is just mandatory. So, I don't know. Uh, let me know what you guys think about Warrior and um, all that. I don't know. I just, I must be, I, I'm trying to I'm trying to stay positive on this spec, but it's clearly, uh, it's turning into the Brewmaster of, of Shadowlands for me, where I just can't see a reason that I'd ever play it. So, let me know what you guys think. Otherwise, that's just a short update on um, on the tank situation. Really little change this week. Uh, hopefully, next week, there's going to be a new build. I'm hoping for um, Necrolord Covenant. That one is going to be very interesting to test classes in. So uh, hopefully you'll stop by if it's if, if it's up. Otherwise, let me know if you have any questions. Thank you for uh, following the series. And if you have anything you want to contribute, let me know, especially uh, what your thoughts are on Warrior and the new prop pally changes. So see you guys in the next one.